So most of us know that XSS is two types. The first one is stored and the other one is reflected. And we have discussed and talked about XSS many times. But the thing that we haven't covered is blind cross-site scripting. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So blind cross-site scripting is a subtype of stored cross-site scripting. It does the same job. Most of the time we use blind cross-site scripting to steal cookies, session IDs, and in some instances we use cross-site scripting or blind cross-site scripting to perform command injection. All right, so what is the difference between stored cross-site scripting and blind stored cross-site scripting? The thing is, in blind, we don't know what is the application response. As you can see, it gets executed in different app or instance, or it may get executed later in time. It shares the same features or the same attributes of stored cross-site scripting. It gets executed in the database, it gets saved in the server, but the thing is we don't know what is the outcome. Why? Let's take an example. Say we have three pages. The first one is register, other one is report, and the third one is ticket. And let's say that in register, we, we register new users. So users use this page to register. In report, let's say this page is used by admin. So why the admin would use this page? The admin would use this page to get a quick look at the tickets submitted by the users. Now, after the users register, they can now use the tickets page to support or to send support tickets. Say they have a bug in the web app, right? So they would send a ticket request through this page. Okay, now, as all of you know, guys, that cross-site scripting can be found by looking at the entry points. What are the typical entry points in a cross-site in the cross-site scripting vulnerability? As all of you know, guys, it is forms. Now, forms come in various types. We have registration forms, we have login forms, and the most other most common type is the search. Now, you may also have comments, the comments section. Okay, after we find these input uh, entry points we can test for cross-site scripting. Okay, so let's say that in the variable page here is the tickets page. The user can, you know, play with the page, play with the form, and see if it is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Now, we can assume that the form is vulnerable to blind XSS, not stored, not reflected. In blind XSS, whatever payload we inject in the form, found, say, in tickets, right, it does get executed, it does, no, it does first get saved in the server, but it gets executed either later in time or in different app or instance. Here in my example, when I inject the payload in the tickets page, it's not gonna get executed in the tickets page. That's why I call it blind. I don't know if it gets executed or not. Now, if it was stored, it would have get executed in the tickets page, right? So when I insert it, or I insert the XSS payload, it gets executed at the same time, simultaneously. That's why I call it stored. In blind, yes, it gets saved in the server, but it doesn't get executed at the page where I injected the payload. But where? It gets executed in another instance. So in my case here, the other instance is report. Why? Because report is the other page or the other instance that is connected with the tickets. They are both connected. In the report, the admin you know, logs into their dashboard and navigate to report to take a look at the tickets that the user have submitted. So when they take a look at the tickets, the payload that was injected in the tickets will now get executed through the report page. That's why I call it blind. It gets executed in another instance. Let's have an example here. Okay, now I have a login form. Let's say now I, I'm a new user, I'm gonna register. So I click on register, username test, password, test. Okay, now registration is successful. We can log in, test, test. And now we can submit a, a ticket, report a bug. When I click on the report a bug, I can have here the form what, which I have talked about in the, in the video. So here in the report. So this is my tickets page and here I have a form. So it's a typical ideal place to test for cross-site scripting vulnerability. Or to do that, you can either do it in the description or in the title. As long as it's a, an input form or an input area, it doesn't matter where. So what to do? All right, let's go back to the form, see what kind of payload we can submit when we deal with blind uh, cross-site scripting. Now, the thing is how to know if it is blind, reflected, or stored. The answer is by, of course, testing. You gotta test. So let's assume that it is reflected across site scripting. Let's have a, 
um, reflected cross-site scripting payload. So, uh, it's a typical pop-up, a payload that pops up an alert. So this one would serve the purpose. Let's go to the report title. I I type test. Okay, so here script tag. Okay, and alert. I use the alert function in JavaScript to let the browser uh, pop up the word hello. That's the first type of testing. I am testing now for reflected cross site scripting. Submit, and nothing gets popped up back to me. It means it's not reflected. Of course, you may you may tell me that you, you have to um, send it the uh, the form to purpose suite test for various payloads. I agree with this. You have to test more than one payload to make a decision. But here we know what we are talking about. We know that this is vulnerable to blind XSL injection. Uh, sorry, blind XSS. But here I'm trying to show you guys the methodology. If, assuming that you are doing this first time, you can have a look at this one. This will pop up the host name. Submit. It doesn't work because it's not vulnerable to reflected. How about now we try with stored cross site scripting? Let's go back here. So, in stored cross site scripting, we may aim to steal the cookies or decision IDs. In more complicated scenarios, we aim to uh, perform command injection, right? Let's not talk about uh, stealing cookies. So, um, in stored and blind, we said that they share the same attributes. They both get saved in the server. And when the admin visits the page, they get executed. The difference is in blind, it gets executed by another page. Okay, so let's try some example here. This is a, um, okay, so this is a cookie stealer payload. Let's have a look at this. So this calls an IP address, okay, and send the cookie using BTOA. BTOA is a function in JavaScript that allows you to base64 encode an ASCII string. What does that mean? It means that when the cookie is grabbed, it will be base64 encoded and sent back to uh, you know, as you can see, it is the uh, server I host. So here my command line, go back, I'm gonna interrupt this and fire a Python server. Going back here, making sure that the IP is correct, my IP is correct, I put the IP on the server, so make sure this is the IP address of your server, because this is the IP that will receive the request. When we send this payload, if it is stored cross-site scripting, I'm gonna get an immediate request back to my server here. If it is not stored, it means it is blind. We don't know what happened, right? So test, and let's see. So after a while, as you can see, we received the cookie. Let's have a look at the request. So there is a 404 message, and that's because in the payload, let's go back, in the payload here, I let the server send uh, a request to non-existent image in my server. It doesn't matter, right? As you can see, it was trying to, this is the IP address of the machine vulnerable to cross-site scripting. And here, I see the request to an image that doesn't exist on my server. It doesn't matter. Because then, on error, we have another other attribute here called on error that makes another call to my server. This time, I accompany it with the cookie. So now we have the cookie, and this is a uh, base64. So what I'm going to do what you can do you can clear here and echo decode the cookie and now let's have a look so the user id that triggered this uh vulnerability has an id equal to and username equals to adam and role is web developer so what's the key takeaway here the key takeaway is um the cookie here can be taken and submitted to get access to the user you know adam as the role web dev. So what's gonna happen here? When we access this user, we're gonna be able to view all the tickets. So we elevated the privileges. That's the ultimate objective of cross-site scripting. So we go back here and we got to click and click on inspect. In the inspect, we go to um, application and there is the cookies. Under cookies, we have the cookie, right? So we're gonna go back, copy the cookie that we received through the blind cross-site scripting, and here we paste the value. We refresh, nothing happened. Okay, let's try to access the uh, reports page I talked about, or the page that displays the tickets, dashboard. And now as you can see here, we have access to all the tickets that have been sent. Now, as a user, if you try to access this page, it's not gonna work as a regular user, but now we have a cookie of a user 
that has a role as a web developer. So web developers should have access to this page, probably or usually have access to these pages. So that's the report page. Now visiting this page has a quick connection to triggering the blind cross-site scripting. You can try another payload. Let's have a look at this one. So this one here performs a callback through the source and uses the BTOA. BTOA encodes the cookie in page 64 and of course uses the is a variable that declares a new image. Let's have a look at this. Make sure the server is up and running and submit a new payload. Test. After a while, we have a get request. Now this time, as you can see, we haven't received these errors because the payload now is different. It doesn't uh, call back or doesn't call to non-existent page. It just performs one callback with a base 64 encoded cookie. So now, as you can see, the output or the output is different. So here, the cookie equals to this value. On the other hand, above here, we got the cookie and the user data in one piece. So this is a ready to use cookie, but here it's not ready to use, and that's because we have used in the payload the PTOA, which encodes the string or the ASCII string into base 64. All you have to do is to copy this, go to uh, decode this into from base 64, and I have the ASCII form user data equals to the cookie. Now again, the cookie is in base 64, and this cookie is the same cookie that we have received earlier. Another payload we can try. More important, most importantly, we want a payload that does a form of callback to my server, because I want the cookie back sent in a GET request. Okay, so this, let's use one that uses the fetch element. And again, we are using BTOA to encode the payload in base64. Honestly, this is a better payload because you want the payload or you want the cookie to be sent in a secure medium. So use test and here make sure the parameters are correct send the request and let's have a look here and we got the cookie again so definitely this form is vulnerable to cross-site scripting but it is the stored one that's the uh, main difference 